Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that Nuh alayhi salam was sent to this most stubborn and arrogant people 950 years ago and only about 10 to 80 of people to believe in. Included in these 80 people are some members of his family. But not all members of Nuh salam's family even followed him and believed. They refused. They teased him. They mocked him. And he said, Oh my Lord, I called my people night and day. In the end, they challenged him. They said, Ya Nuh, why don't you bring upon us this punishment that you are talking about, if you are truthful. It was revealed to Nuh, I am going to flood them. So do not worry about their misdeeds. We open the doors of the storm with water that gushed down non-stop and we made the earth explode with fountains upon fountains and rivers the water of the sky of the heavens and the water of the earth met in accordance with a decree from Allah in waves as big as mountains when Idris salam died a few hundred years passed and subhanallah Allah did not send a prophet or a messenger in that time. No prophet, no messenger was needed. There were only righteous people. Everybody loved them. When they died, somehow, five of them became the most popular. These five men, their names were Wadd, Suwa', Yahud, Ya'uq, and Nasr. This is where the shaitan comes in. He gives people ideas. Why don't you make an anniversary every year where you remember these people? Year after year, they started to commemorate their death. Then another generation came where their ignorance got worse. And Shaitan said, why don't you like build statues out of them so that people can remember them even more? And the people built statues. They said, what a great idea. They turned these five idols into gods and they started to worship them outright. And for the first time, Allah sent the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. He is about the 10th generation after Adam alayhi salam. This, he was the first messenger of Allah to be sent to a people who had committed shirk like they disbelieved now. This is kufr. Nuh alayhi salam was said to have sent to Babylonia. Some said he was in India. Others said uh, he was... Uh, close to the Turkey region, but the point is somewhere around there, Nuh alayhi salam, we don't know exactly. And Nuh alayhi salam is the second most narrated prophet to us in the Quran. Nuh alayhi salam tried very hard. He is the first one to teach us the art of da'wah. Nuh alayhi salam was the first prophet to absolutely exhaust every avenue of communication you can think of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that Nuh alayhi salam was sent to this most stubborn and arrogant people. 950 years he called it. And only about 10 to 80 of people to believe in him. Included in these 80 people are some members of his family. But not all members of Nuh salam's family even followed him and believed. And for this reason, Nuh salam becomes the first of the five most important prophets called Ulul Azm. They persevered the most with their people and suffered the most from their people. Allah says in the Quran, Verily we sent Nuh to his people to warn them of their act before a punishment befalls them. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Nuh salam, and verily we sent Nuh to his people and he said to them, I am to you a clear warner that you do not worship other than Allah alone. I fear upon you. All the prophets called their people in the most compassionate and merciful manner. Whenever they called their people, they invited them wishing and willing and um, hoping 
and really wanting the best for their people. They refused. They teased him. They mocked him. They propagated against him. They did all sorts of plots and plans to get rid of him. In one hadith, I'm not sure of its authenticity, but its meaning is true. It says that a man would come who has a child who had lived for 500 years with him, who they lived long. And he would point to Noah, an old man, and he would say to his son, See this man? He is a crazy man. He's insane. Everybody knows him. Father, he's been insane. Stay away from him. That's how people used to talk about Noah. He was a messenger of Allah. La ilaha illallah. And he said, Oh my Lord, I called my people night and day. My invitation to them did not increase them in anything but more running away. And every time I called them to, for, to ask Allah to forgive them and for them to ask forgiveness for their sins, what would they do? They would bring their clothes and cover their ears with it. And so Nuh started to use sign language with them. He said, I called them in public. Then I realized maybe some of them are embarrassed. I went to them in secret as well. I used to go and knock on their doors in private. I said, I saw you in public at the bed. Maybe you believe, but you're just too embarrassed. Just tell me in secret. I will cover it. I will bear witness for you in Allah. Is there anything you want me to teach you? And they would still say, no, not even in secret. Nuh tried every, every form. Tough, rough, easy, soft, nice, everything. So whenever they mocked him, he did not mock them back. Whenever they denigrated him, he did not denigrate them back. All he used to say to them is, I fear upon you. And such was Nuh alayhi salam. In the end, only 80 or so people followed him. And if it wasn't bad enough, those 80 people who followed him were from the lower class of the, of the whole nation. They were the lower class. Their jobs were nothing. They were the lowest. They were the poorest. They were nobodies. So they looked at these people and they said, Ya Nuh. You've been talking to us and arguing with us and debating with us. You've debated us and you've just debated too long. Five, six hundred, seven hundred years. After all this time, all we see following you are the lowest of our people. They said to him, if those peasants leave you, we will follow you. They challenged him. They said, Ya Nuh, why don't you bring upon us this punishment that you are talking about? If you are truthful. And Nuh salam, he tells them, Oh my people, if I wanted bad for you, can't you see that I do not ask you for any money? I don't ask you for any reward. Why would I call you when I don't really mean it well towards you? And if I am lying to you, then my lie is against me. I take it on my shoulders. And he tried to tell them all sorts of things. In the end, Nuh salam said, I'm not going to force it upon you when you don't want it. So Nuh salam did this for 950 years until suddenly an amazing news came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was the most unfortunate and bad news upon Nuh salam for the past 950 years. Allah said to him, It was revealed to Nuh that no more of your people, other than those who already believed, will ever come to believe. So do not grieve over their deeds. So these people are going to keep living and give birth to people who are also disbelievers and corrupted, who will give more birth to other people who are corrupted, and the righteous will run out, and so the earth will be inherited by corrupted people. Allah will never accept that. But for Nuh alayhi salam, Allah told him, no more will believe. Like, forget about it. No more hope. Whether you call them or don't, that's it. And that is when Nuh alayhi salam gave up. At this point, Nuh alayhi salam stepped back, and he started to complain to Allah about his people. He said, oh Allah, I've called them, and I've done this, and I've done that, and I said this, and I said that. And finally, all they did was bad, and all they did was refuse, and all they did was challenge, and all they did was mock, and all they did was... 
O my Lord. If you leave them alive, then they will only give birth to generations who will only corrupt and disbelieve in you and turn the world into corruption. And finally, Nuh made his famous dua, which is not only known in the Quran, but it's also shared by every major religion that exists today. Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism. Those religions all know about Nuh They all know about the flood. And subhanAllah, the Quran also asserts it. Nuh said, my Lord, do not leave out of these unbelievers even a single dweller on earth. For certainly if you should leave them alive, they will mislead your servants and will beget none but sinners and utter unbelievers. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to his dua. And he said, Okay, now move away from the people, Ya Nuh, and go up into the mountain. The angels will be waiting for you, and there will be trees that you're going to cut and plant, and they're going to teach you how to build an ark. I am going to flood them. So do not worry about their misdeeds. Allah put them on earth. Allah is the only one who has the right to take them back. When he went up into the mountains and started to build the ark, the angels used to come to him and teach him because he didn't know. He used to cut the trees, make planks, make the nails by the guidance of the angels and build the ark. Allah says, so now build the ark with our command or with our guidance and with our wahi, with our angels sent to you to teach you. And he said, there's this particular oven that you will see up in the mountain. When the tanur, this oven, floods with water and you see the water coming out of it, go and get a male and a female pair of every creature and put them onto the ark and members of your family except the members of your family who did not believe now the quran doesn't say who they were but the quran does mention two at least it mentions his wife she rejected and disbelieved in Nuh, and she did something even worse Nuh's wife used to go around and call him a crazy man behind his back and he didn't know it and the second one was his son they say in Israeli tradition, traditions that his name was Kenan, Kan'an. He was a rebellious son. And he chose not to believe in his father, but he kept it a secret. He didn't tell his father, but he used to go around and conspire against him. He didn't want to be around his father. He started disobeying his father. He started tricking his father. And he disbelieved. Even knowing that his son had gone astray, he was always trying to help him. Right up to the point when he built the ark. Nuh still hoped that his son would climb on with them. As Nuh was building the ark, the elite members, the big people, among his people used to pass by him in the mountain when he was building the ark. They used to tease him and mock him. They used to say, look everyone, building a ship in the mountain. We told you he's crazy. Who builds a ship in the mountain? Noah used to look at them and he used to smile with ease and he used to say, if you want to mock me now, we will soon mock you the same way you're mocking us and you shall know who is the one who is guided and who is not. In a narration, and this is the Israeli tradition as well, they say that a disease developed in their skin and no one could find the cure to it. They say that they used to uh, go to his ark and they used to use it as a toilet. And they filled it with so much feces and poop. So one day one of those men with the disease in his skin was doing his thing. And he slipped. And when he fell on this feces, what happened was that the story says that after a few days he was cured. And when people saw that, they go, what happened man? He goes, well, I fell on, on poop. So they all started going to the ark and cleaning it up from all this medicine. <laughs> and putting it on their skin until they were cured. Now, as I said, Allahu A'lam about the authenticity of it, but this is in the Israeli traditions. Anyway, brothers and sisters, when uh, he built this ark, there is a description to it. They say that the ark was approximately something equal to about a kilometer to one and a half kilometers long and about 300 meters wide. 
and about 200 meters high. And it was made out of three stories. And the top was also oval. It was concave as the bottom. And then one day, Nuh salam sees the oven. It was boiling with water. Water was coming out. And started gathering a pair of each animal. From every creature, a pair. Now, which members of his family didn't believe? A few. We said his wife and his son. In the Israelite traditions, he had three sons named Sam, Ham and Yafit. Now, there's only one hadith I came across which is reliable that the, by Imam al-Dhahabi. He says the Prophet ﷺ named three of his sons, Sam, Ham and Yaf. As for the Israelite traditions, they say that only these three sons were on the ark, no other family member, and that the human race all came from only these three sons afterwards. The Qur'an does not specify only these three. In fact, the Qur'an refutes that. The offsprings of those whom we put on the ark with Nuh. Who was on the ark? The believers and members of his family. But if it was true that the human race was to be traced to these three, it would mean, in a, an, an unreliable hadith, uh, says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought out from Sam all the Arabs, the Persians and the Romans, and from Ham, the Africans and the Barbars. The Barbars are nomads of ancient modern day Algeria. And Yafit, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, came from him, along with the Turks, <laughs> not the Turks of today, but they're referring to the ancient Mongols, and the someone, some people called Safarida. They are the modern day Russians and the likes of them. We opened the doors of the sky with water that gushed down non-stop. And we made the earth explode with fountains upon fountains and rivers. The water of the sky, of the heavens, and the water of the earth met in accordance with a decree from Allah. And suddenly, within a few moments, like maybe minutes or even hours, and within only a few hours, the ark started to sail. Allah says, suddenly if you were to look at the ark, O Muhammad, you would see it floating in waves as big as mountains. That's how Allah describes it. And suddenly, who did Nuh see before the ocean filled the mountains? He sees his son, Kanaan. And Nuh fatherly emotions overcomes him. He gets scared for his son. He forgets for a single moment that he is a prophet. His love and his compassion for his son kicked in. And he didn't want to think that he is a kafir. In fact, his son didn't tell him. And Nuh didn't really know. But he wanted to give his son the benefit of the doubt. He didn't care about his wife because he knew his wife had betrayed him. But what he remembered was who? He remembered his son before his wife. Nuh called out to his son, Nada, from a distance. Ya Bunay, oh my son, come and climb on top with us. Don't be among the disbelievers. His son did not even pay attention. From a distance, he looked at his father without care. And he said, Dad, I'm going to go to a higher mountain. Don't worry, the water won't reach me. Nuh said to him, There is no saving from the decree of Allah. Illa man rahim, except to him, Allah gives mercy. <coughs> as soon as he was still talking to his son, trying to save him, the son was neglectful. He started walking away from his father. Allah then cuts the story in half and doesn't continue and says the waves intercepted between them and his son became among the ones who drowned. And then Allah changes the story, he doesn't want to talk about his son anymore. And then he goes back to the ark. The ark started sailing. Allahu alam how long some of them are. There's differing opinions. Some say months, some say year, some say weeks. Allahu alam. And then Allah ordered the earth to swallow its water and the sky to stop raining and the ark started to settle as the water went down and Allah said settled on Mount Judi and Allah says in the Quran وَلَقَدْ تَرَكْنَاهَا آيَةٌ we have left it as a sign for those who came after him 
Now when it settled and everything was settled and the animals came out, Nuh alayhi salam all this time was thinking about what? He's thinking about his son. Allah, can you imagine the agony and the pain Nuh alayhi salam is going through? So he said, Oh my Lord, my son is one of my family and your promise is always true. But you are the wisest judge. I'm not going to question you. But he did. Ya Lord, you promised me they're going to save my family, in other words. And my son is one of my family. Allah responded, Ya Nuh, no, you got it wrong. He is not one of your family. The ultimate family connection is not on blood. It doesn't end there. It ends with your religion, with your deen. In this world, you may be with blood. In the hereafter, Allah separates between the blood relatives and only those who worshipped him are the ones who enter paradise as a family. And Ya Nuh, you didn't know. Don't ask me about something you have no knowledge of. Like you expect me to save your son, but you don't know that he was a hypocrite, a disbeliever. You didn't know that. So don't ask me again about him. And don't ever ask me about something out of your emotions. Allah says, Inni a'ibuka. I'm just reminding you. And takuna min al Not to be among the ignorant. Meaning, think before you ask. What did Nuh alayhi salam do? He said, Rabbi, oh, my Lord, forgive me. I seek refuge in you from me being among the ignorant. And if you don't forgive me and have mercy upon me, I will be among the losers. He forgot about his son as if the flood had never happened. And Nuh alayhi salam returned from his normal, natural, fatherly nature back to the height of prophethood. And Nuh alayhi salam lived for another few hundred years after that. And you had the civilization, human race started again. Came from that small amount of people who were on the ark. Nuh alayhi salam was called the second father of mankind. So then Nuh alayhi salam died and his children died and they gave birth and alhamdulillah the whole human race returned back to Tawheed. Time passed, Allahu A'lam how much time passed. The ulama talk about a thousand, two thousand years and then subhanallah the shaitan came back, the human beings got ideas and shirk returned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then has to send another prophet to the people to return them back to Tawheed. And so he sent the prophet Hud alayhi salam. 